Radio Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. Calling all believers, are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come for the fellowship, stay for Cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Disability Empowerment Foundation in partnership with Great Commission Foundation presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Admission free. That's the Disability Awareness Musical Concert, April 6, 2024. See you there, HGG Radio. Good afternoon, good afternoon to you, top of the afternoon to you. Welcome to the uh, another edition of the Apostles' Doctrine. It's actually the fourth episode of the show right here on HGG Radio. Uh, wherever you are listening or watching from around the world, we are absolutely glad to have you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the scriptures tell us, as we often see, and you'll often hear us repeat in this program, uh, in Acts chapter 2 and at verse 42, that the early church continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And of course, the apostles' doctrine is simply the teaching of the apostles, and the teaching of the apostles uh, wasn't theirs. It was the, what the Lord Jesus gave them uh, to teach unto the people. So the apostles' doctrine is God's doctrine. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine. So this Bible discussion program is designed to ascertain that whether or not the 21st century church is doing what the 1st century church did by continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine and a breaking of bread. Uh, bread is, you know, people breaking bread, <laughs> but are they continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? And nothing is wrong with breaking bread, yeah? The books say you must break bread. Uh, on today's edition of the program, though, the topic up for discussion is the question of eternal security. It is quite a controversial topic. Is it biblical? Uh, better known as once saved, always saved. Does the Bible actually teach that once you become a believer, once you are saved, that you are always saved, regardless of how you choose to live your life? That's the big question uh, we're putting under the microscope today. Are believers eternally secure? You can't backslide. That's the big question. This is important, I think, because, and we'll hear from our eminent uh, panel, uh, a, a little for, uh, just a little from this. It is, it's an important question because this has a direct impact on someone's destination, whether or not they're going to be making it into the rapture. That is how important this question is, because if you believe that you are always saved, it means then that a person can live uh, any way they choose and do things that the scriptures don't condone and are still under the impression that they are always saved. Their, 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 their salvation is secure regardless of their action. And of course, uh, this kind of teaching was first introduced in around the 1500s with, by one called John Calvin, but I'm not the expert here. You'll hear from the experts. We have uh, joining us uh, a theologian in his uh, own right. Yes, Pastor Garfield King uh, joining us from a via video link from New York. And of course, in studio with me, uh, as always, is uh, Pastor Clive Atkinson. Uh, he is the lead pastor of uh, Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministry. Gentlemen, 
Good evening and uh, good afternoon, rather. I'm hastening the day. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Apostles' Doctrine. Good to have you back, Pastor King. Good to have you with us again, Pastor Clive. Thank you. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, before we get the thoughts of these eminent individuals that we have on board with us uh, today, let's first hear the proponents of this doctrine. And uh, I, I, we have a video for you that, that, that uh, we found that uh, the, this individual seeks to lay down why he believes this doctrine of one saved, always saved, is biblical. Is this notion, is this teaching, yes, that is connected to uh, Calvinism and, and his followers, yes, is it in step with the apostles' doctrine? That is what we are weighing and measuring today, yeah. yes, and we, we want to weigh and measure this because it is vitally important as it can be a deciding factor in where people eventually end up in that great and terrible day. Because if folks believe that they are always saved regardless of what they do, then that may have a deleterious impact on how people live their lives, yes? Right. So that is why we want to weigh and measure uh, the doctrine of eternal security today to see if it's found wanting in the balance. Uh, you can join us if you're listening to us via the HGG app. I want to welcome you. Uh, if you're listening via the HGG radio app, welcome to the Apostles' Doctrine. And if you are on YouTube, uh, welcome to you as well. You can jump on over to the HGG radio YouTube channel where you can see and hear everything that is transpiring live. So let's go to this video now. Here are the uh, here is a proponent of the one saved, always saved doctrine, and he's trying. He's going to be outlining for you why he believes that this teaching is scriptural. Let's hear what he has to say, and then we'll come back and get the remarks from the members of the panel. Here is that video. Once you are saved, are you always saved? Or can you as a Christian make the conscious choice to walk away from God, thus forfeiting your own salvation? That is what we want to talk about today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith, like this particular video. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new, consider subscribing. So as I said in the intro, this question has come up so many times in the comment section on a variety of videos on this channel. So I did a video about uh, two years ago go on this subject, but I want to circle back and actually go through it in more detail. So here is all I ask from you. Take your time and go through this entire video. Watch it from start to finish. And if you disagree, I ask that you provide a very humble and respectful comment in the comment section below using scripture, because no offense, uh, we're not interested in what you think is fair or what is logical. We want to see what God has to say. So I'm going to provide for you seven reasons why I believe that the Bible teaches that once you become a genuine follower of Jesus Christ, it is absolutely impossible for you to lose your salvation. But before we get there, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says this, I'm writing you these things so that you may know that you have eternal life. So I don't believe that it's God's will for us to be wandering around in the spiritual life, questioning and doubting our salvation. No, I believe that God wants us to have the assurance to know 100% that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. Number one, the biggest objection that I often hear to this doctrine of eternal security, or better known to you maybe as once saved, always saved, is this idea that, you know what, somebody can become a Christian, give their life to Jesus Christ, and then spend the rest of their life living in sin. My friend, this is a severe misunderstanding of the doctrine of once saved, always saved. As a matter of fact, the apostle Paul dealt with this in Romans chapter 5, where he's talking about God's grace. And at the end of Romans chapter 5, he says this. He says, where sin increased, 
grace increased even more. So that sounds on the surface like he's saying, you know what, wherever there is sin, God's going to have more grace for you. In other words, you can't out sin God's grace. So you know what, this is a license for you to sin and do whatever you want to do because you'll never be able to sin more than God's grace. And because the apostle Paul anticipates the evil thinking that we're going to have. And so Paul says, by no means, no, that is not what I'm teaching. As a matter of fact, he goes on to say, how can we who died to sin continue to live in it any longer. So Paul is essentially saying here, it is preposterous to think that somebody could experience true, authentic regeneration and then go spend the rest of their lives living in sin. Number two is because our salvation is described in the Bible as being eternal. One of the famous verses in the Bible, John 3, 16, which says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but here it is, shall have eternal life. So in other words, he doesn't say you shall have this eternal life until you sin. You should have this eternal life until you decide to walk away. No, this is a promise straight from God that says, you know what? Whenever I save you, you have eternal life and there's nothing that can change that. The third reason that I believe you cannot lose your salvation is because of a doctrine taught in the Bible called the preservation of the saints. Now, I'm going to break that down. Essentially, all that means is that if God is strong enough to save you, then that means he's powerful enough to keep you from falling away. Now, I'm going to read several verses here, and I'm going to slowly explain each one. Jude chapter 1, verse 24. It says this, To him, speaking to God, who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. So this verse clearly says, that God is powerful enough to keep you from stumbling or falling away from him. Another very strong scripture that supports the idea of once saved, always saved is John chapter 10, verse 28 and 29, which says this, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Now watch this. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Verse 29, my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my father's hands. I and the father are one. So notice it says no one is powerful enough to snatch us out of God's hands. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, you know what? But yeah, we can take ourselves out of God's hand. You know what? We cannot do that because it clearly says no one can take us out of his hand. And that means we are included in the no one. If God wanted to say no one but the believer can snatch us out of his hands or no one but the Christian can snatch us out of his hands, then he would have said that. We need to be careful not to add certain things to the scripture that it doesn't say. The next passage of scripture is a very, very strong proof that we cannot lose our salvation. John chapter 6, verses 37 through 40, it says this, All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall, here it is, lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. So you know what Jesus is saying here? He's saying every single believer throughout the history of time that my father has entrusted to me, not only have I not cast them out, but I have not lost one of them. In other words, he's saying, I've got an undefeated record. Every believer that's come to me, I've not ever lost one. And then the final scripture, Philippians chapter one, verse six says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In other words, once again, he's not saying until you decide to walk away from God. He's saying, you know what? When God starts to do a work of sanctification and regeneration in your heart, he is committed to bringing that work to completion until we get to see Jesus Christ face to face. The fourth reason why a Christian cannot lose their salvation is this doctrine called the perseverance of the saints. Not the preservation, but the perseverance. And this is the idea that if you are genuinely, truly, authentically a Christian, you are going to continue along the path and you're going to continue to follow God and endure until the end. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. First John chapter two, verse four says, whoever says, 
I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in that person. So once again, he's not saying our lives need to be perfect, but he is saying that if you are a Christian, you are going to show some fruit, some tangible signs, and you are going to persevere into the end. The fifth reason is because of the omniscience of God. So this is the idea that whenever you get saved, God knows every single thing that you are going to do from the beginning of your life all the way to the end, all the crazy decisions, all the bad stuff. And so if God knows all of that, then why would he save somebody with full knowledge that one day they're going to turn away from them? It doesn't make sense. It's not consistent with the idea of God's omniscience, nor is it consistent with the idea that Jesus said earlier in this video where he said, all of the ones that God has given to me, I will not lose one of them. Number six is a very, very important one. And this is the idea that Christianity is not a works-based religion. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So notice what he's saying here. Three things. Your salvation did not originate from you. It originated from God. Second of all, your salvation has absolutely no dependence on your works and your performance. And then third of all, it is a gift given from God to you. So to say that you have to continue keeping up some perfect standard or continue to work in order to somehow get into God's graces is to suggest that Christianity is now a works-based religion, which now makes it the same as all of the other different religions in the world. What you're saying when people say you can lose your salvation, but they don't realize that they're saying it is this. Jesus, the work that you did on the cross was not sufficient to cover all of my sins. It was sufficient to cover some of these sins over here that I think are forgiven, but oh no, this big one over here, certainly you cannot cover that particular sin. And so if I continue to do these things, maybe I'll get into heaven. But once I do this, well, you know what? Jesus didn't cover that. My friend, this is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that all of our sin, past, present, and future was nailed to the cross and forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And number seven is this idea of election. I save this one to the end because a lot of people struggle with this doctrine. And this is the idea that God chooses some people for special purposes, and that is his business. There's a couple scriptures that I want to leave with you. Ephesians chapter one, verse four says this, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So it says very clearly here that God had his mark on you before the foundation of the world, which means that your salvation has nothing to do with whether you do good things or bad things. It has to do with God's purpose in your life. But here's another very convincing scripture about this idea that God does choose some people, whether we like it or not, for his own purposes. Speaking of Jacob and Esau in the book of Romans chapter nine, verse 11 says this, but before they were born, before they had done anything good or bad, she received a message from God. This message shows that God chooses people according to his own purposes. He calls people, but not according to their good or bad works. Now, I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit trail of election because some people say, you know what, that means that God had everything set up in the beginning and he chose people that he wanted and then the other people he sent to hell. No, the Bible does not support or teach the idea that God sends people to hell. So my friend, instead of seeing this doctrine of eternal security as a license to sin and do whatever you want to do, Instead, see it as a reason to praise God, that God has chosen you, he's protected you, and he's going to keep you until the day of salvation. Another thing that I want to say is this. Please don't let this doctrine divide us any further. Listen, the enemy wants to divide the church and get us to argue about all these different things, points of doctrine. It's not worth it. Look, if you believe something differently, that doesn't mean that you're going to hell. If I believe something different, that doesn't make me a false teacher or false prophet or that I'm going to hell. Look, we need to come together and celebrate the things that we do agree on and not spend all of our time arguing about theological matters. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe, check out some of the other videos on this channel. Also, if you want to learn how to study the Bible, step... There you have it, uh, a proponent of the once saved, always saved doctrine, yeah? Uh, linked to Calvinism, yes? The doctrine of eternal security. Uh, you heard the, 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 that, that defense there of once saved, always saved, uh, past the king. I give you the, the, the opening response. Is that a correct interpretation of scripture? What says the apostles' doctrine?
on eternal security. Amen. Bless the Lord, uh, Minister Reed, Pastor uh, yes, Atkinson. God bless you. And all the viewers by um, whatever medium you have joined us today. I, I just want to correct something, um, Brother Tyrone. I'm, 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 not, I'm not a theologian. I'm just a pastor. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I consider you a theologian, sir. <laughs> Amen. So, but so, so nonetheless, this um doctrine of one saved, always saved. You know, I I believe it's an extremely dangerous doctrine, <laughs> probably one of the most dangerous doctrines. And um, in a sense, this doctrine states that you know, once somebody is 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 saved, once they become a child of God, then regardless of whatever sin they commit thereafter, you know, it 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 doesn't impact them and um that they'll still be saved but you know i want to state um from the from the outset that this is a, a non-biblical doctrine not just non-biblical you know it's more than just a <laughs> slight you know deviation from what the bible teaches but really it's antithetical to what the bible says so you know the scriptures are in there are plethora of scriptures many um that are just in direct contradiction to to to, to that belief and um you know and, and and so i believe that you know the, the young man that did the, the the video um he presented a classical um calvinistic view amen but but uh you know in, in all humility i think he's wrong now i'd like to start briefly um with a history of of, of this doctrine because you know it's common to believe that it, it started with Calvin um, in the 1500s, you know, that great, you know, great reformer. Um, however, or, or you know, the, the, the thing is that uh, history teaches us that this doctrine has its roots in Gnosticism, you know, which the, was about in the first century, you know, and, and second century. And um, so therefore the Gnostics believe that the, that the body was, you know basically corrupt and, and and it was separate from the spirit and um just to cut a long story short and they believe that um so whatever sins that are committed in the body really doesn't impact salvation and the thing is that many people um use this many so-called christians as an excuse for licentious living amen and, and that is one of the dangers that it presents and so this doctrine as well it was it surfaced later in in the fourth um, to fifth century, there was this theologian, um, Augustine of Hippo, and um, he was, you know, bishop of 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 North African Rome, so to speak, and he had, you know, similar beliefs. And now Calvin points to, uh, you know, Augustine and, and says that, you know, he got a lot of his beliefs from Augustine as well. So, so the thing is that it, it, it's a it's it's a it, it's heresy that is, you know. Um, about for a very long time, all right? Deep seated for a rooted um, heresy. And um, what the, 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 the thing is that the where this is concerned, it's, it's steeped in, in, in Calvinism, which has basically five points, and I'm not gonna spend long on, on them, but these five points can be summarized um, from the acronym TULIP, um, T, which is total depravity, where they believe that, you know, there's absolutely nothing good in man, you know, and man is so, they pray that he can't even accept God's salvation. And so there is this thing of unconditional election where God, and that's what he alluded to in the last part of, of his presentation, where God decides those who will be saved and those who will go to hell, which makes God unfair, really. And then they have this thing of called limited atonement, that Jesus died on the cross, not for everybody, but just for the elect. And so his blood was not for the world, as the Bible says, you know, God so loved the world. You know, they, they limit the world there and anyone to, to, to a few people. And um, irresistible grace, which says that, you, you know, that whether or not you want to accept the grace of God or the salvation, you have no choice in the matter. You are is, forced to. God is so forced like, to. You know, <laughs> God is a, God, forgive the term, it might seem cruel, but, you know, God doesn't force himself on anybody. God no. don't rape anybody for salvation. And don't you take it now and not. hold it against your will. <laughs> you know, and that's what they say. Right. And the final part, which which is perseverance of the saints, and and he referred to that in his presentation as well. And it, th this is what we call one save, always save. 
And so the perseverance of the saints, it means that, you know, once, you know, somebody is saved, then regardless of what happened, they, they will be saved. There's nothing that they can do um, not to be saved. Amen. It is there a single passage, uh, Pastor? I, before I, I take your single passage, or because yeah. I know you probably have quite a few lined up, many <laughs> um, to, to 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 demonstrate, yeah, that this teaching is not scriptural. It's not in keeping with scriptures. It's not yes. in keeping with what was taught by the apostles. Yes, it's it's just not biblical, right? But before okay. we get to that, because I know you have your scriptures lined up, let me get the opening remarks from uh, uh, Pastor Clive Atkinson, who is with me in studio. Pastor Clive, what is your take on this uh, doctrine of eternal security? Are believers, once saved, always saved? Let me just say uh, no. And um, that uh, teaching or that sense of belief Mm -hmm. It's like a man walking on thin ice. He can fall in any time. I would not encourage persons to believe such thing. However, uh, we know that when Jesus died and we received the Holy Ghost, he gave us eternal life. That's what we have, which is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you have eternal life and nothing that you do, you can't lose it. The Bible said that if any man put his, pull back his hand from the plow, my soul has no pleasure in this man. Why would Jesus use such a statement? So we have to be careful of what persons teach. And it sounds good to persons who are very, uh, I don't want to say lazy to read, are lazy to pray because I hear one preacher saying, whether you pray or not, as long as you get saved, you're good. Because all you need to do is just to believe and you know you're saved. And once you're saved, you can live. They that's don't really say it that's like the, that. That's like, the danger of it, isn't it? It's that very it can dangerous. lead a Christian into um, accepting that they can live anyway. That's really the danger of this doctrine. That's the danger. Even though they're, 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 they're cleaning it up by saying you can't, but they're saying that even if you do, you're still good. And that's that's the problem. That's walk. That's, I don't know. You, I'll take you. I fish in one of these days. <laughs> I will walk on the thin ice. <laughs> but you walk on thin ice. I'm telling you, it, it, it's very thin. Mm. And you can cave in at any given moment. The next thing, point I want to make is that he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So if I don't endure, mm. there's no such thing as me being saved at the end. I have to hold on to God. I have to be praying. I have to be fasting. I have to be keeping myself, my body. Bring in my, Paul wouldn't say, bring in your body under subjection. Why would he even mention all these things? Mm. Mm. You, you see? He that says, man, once you get saved, you're good. Paul would have sealed it off. You wouldn't bring in there that you need to pray. No and need for endurance. He, he, wouldn't even, he wouldn't even write Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8. Because mm -hmm. Romans chapter 7 shows that he's struggling with some things. Romans chapter 7, there is therefore no, no condemnation to them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm. So you, you, we need to get to the place in God that we, as people need to know that you're going to have persons come up with different type of doctrines and here it says, and it's not what the apostles taught. Well, uh, you know, we, we, we are almost upon the, upon the first break, but, but one of the scriptures they use, and you heard it in that video, because we want to try to deal with this each passage. Yes. And, you know, I want to share it to, to our listeners because we're going to take the break. And then when we come back, we're going to take those passages from you, Pastor King. And I know Pastor Clive must be loaded with scriptures as well uh, to respond to this. But First John 5, verse 13 is one of the passages uh, that was quoted, uh, Rev. And it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And the suggestion, therefore, is 
that once you've received eternal life, the thing is eternal. You can't lose it. That is that is the suggestion. That is what the the those who believe in this doctrine of one save always save. That's what they are putting on the table. Now, now we're going to take uh, our, our first break because we're, we're up on the first break now. Yes, we're up on the first break. We're going to take the first break and then we're going to come back with some passages because one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm learning is that sometimes it is dangerous to take one verse of a passage or of scripture and run and seek to establish an entire doctrine on that one verse. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So we need to put uh, uh, the entire book, yes, together on this particular topic. So we're going to hear uh, from Pastor Clive and, and Pastor uh, uh, King when we come back. Is eternal life yours once you've been saved and you can't undo it? It not up, it tie up and you can't pull it out. When we come back, we'll hear more on the other side. Calgary, join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross over. Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm blessed. Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team live in concert. Doors open at 6 30 p.m. Showtime 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60 Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at Eventbrite. Or call 780-284-3450. That's Come Worship the King, Calgary. See you there. My soul. HGG Radio. Edmonton, get ready for Come Worship the King on April 6, 2024. Hosted by MR Productions. Come and experience the ultimate night of praise and worship featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross over. Michael Reed, oh, Chanel Edwards, cross- Glenn Barnes, yeah. and Pastor Alrick O'Connor. Special appearances from Chosen Generation. And we are his. MC Crystal Reed at the Citadel International Church, 9253 48th Street, Edmonton. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. Showtime, 6 p.m. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call Call 780-284-3450. That's Come Worship the King, King Edmonton. See you there. My soul. HGG Radio. Calling all believers. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's the Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MSD. Come to the fellowship, stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Radio. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities, 
Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca. That's ads at hggradio.ca. Or call us today at 825-343-4486. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us right here on the Apostles Doctrine on HGG Radio. I'm your host, the Tyrone Reed. With me in studio is Pastor Clive Atkinson. And joining us via video link is Pastor Garfield King. And he's joining us out of New York uh, in the U.S. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for staying with us. The question we are weighing and measuring today is very critical. Very critical. And it is the question of one saved, always saved, the doctrine of eternal security. And we, if you're just joining us, we played for you uh, uh, the views of a proponent of this teaching, uh, seeking to lay out why they believe this thing uh, is scriptural. One of the scriptures they used, we read it before we went to the break, was First John uh, 5, verse 13. They also quote from Romans chapter 5, verse 20, and it says, and I'll read verse 21 for you as well, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, that grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So they're saying you can't out sin grace. So how can you lose your salvation? Pastor King, uh, talk to us. What say the apostles on this doctrine of <laughs> Uh, you, you know, before I start reading the scripture, um, th th there's a fundamental error that people argue they tend to make. And um, they tend to mix up struggling with sin and, and practicing sin. There are two different concepts. You know, struggling with sin um, indicates that there is a fight and, and, and we have different proclivities and, and different weaknesses. And, and, and this is where the grace of God covers but, but then the Bible speaks of people who evidently um, turn and practice sin. They call wrong right, you know, right wrong. And um, they reject the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and what is written in the word and, and live contrary. And, and in that case, when someone backslides and eventually becomes apostate, they would have removed themselves. So, yes, we have been given eternal sal salvation is eternal. And um, there is that assurance that, you know, once we stick with God, you know, we will have salvation. Yeah. However, what they miss is that you can also decide not to stick with God. And so there are a few scriptures, and I think the scripture is... And before you dive into the scriptures, yeah. uh, Pastor King, I, one of the things I wanted to ask you, because it's a question that came to me today uh, while looking at, 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 at make, doing the research for the, for the program today, is there's a difference between backsliding and being in a state of apostasy is is that is that accurate yeah i'd, I'd, I'd say so you know someone who's was backslidden um definitely they have fallen from grace that they have probably broken fellowship you know you'd find backsliders are repentant sometimes desirous of coming back but when someone reaches the state of apostasy it means that they have totally rejected um the the, the gospel and um, they are they are they are they are teaching and preaching or believing something that is different and contrary, amen, to to what the Lord Jesus Christ um, delivered. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that apostasy is a far worse state. You know, it it is a slide to 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 the extreme level. And I, and I think this is this is referenced in Hebrews chapter six, I believe. And, and just since we're on the point, I just wanted yeah. to to expound on it. I think this is found in Hebrews chapter 6 because it's one of the talking points I had made a note of because I think it is very critical. Hebrews chapter 6 beginning at about verse 4, yeah, I think. Verse 6, yeah. Right? And, and it says, uh, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and having tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come. And it's important to know that that word powers there um, is the same word uh, used in reference to receiving the Holy Ghost, which is dunamis, when the mm -hmm. Bible says, you shall receive power. So this reference is to the, is to the, is to the Holy Ghost. Yes. And, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, Mm. And that fall away there is not mere backsliding. It's talking about apostasy, where you've where you've rejected the faith. Yes, you've you've you denounced it. So you said, um, 
you know, I don't even want to say the words, right? You you yeah. speak blasphemous things against the Lord and against mm. the, the Holy Ghost. And and the Bible says there is only one unpardonable sin, and that is That's blaspheming right. of the against the Holy Ghost. And and people who become apostate generally uh you know go across that line where they blaspheme uh, against against the holy ghost and, and speak all manner of ill but mm-hmm. it goes on to say uh, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the son of god afresh and put him to an open shame mm-hmm. so this isn't just merely talking about people who backslid it's talking about what you just referenced and the yeah. distinction you made about people getting into a state of apostasy. And we need to make the distinction between those two things. But talk to us now, Pastor King. Yeah, this this is one of the scriptures that I'd I'd lined up um, to talk about because it shows here the writer, and and there's still debate whether or not it was Paul. Mm -hmm. I think most theologians say it wasn't. But nonetheless, the writer was speaking to a a, a group of Christians, the church. It was a mixture of... of, um, Hebrew and, and Gentile Christians, but prob- probably predominantly um, Hebrew Christians. And the history um, tells us that, you know, many of them, after a while, they, they rejected the faith of Jesus Christ and went back to Judaism. And, and so that's where they went in apostasy now. So this that they had gotten, evidently they had the, the born again experience that, that we see in the book of Acts. They were serving, but they reach a point where they reject this that they were now in, this gospel, and they turn back um, to the weak and beg- beggarly elements. And mm-hmm. so therefore, if, if it is, and, and it's clear from this that these were people who were once saved. So it, it tells us that um, they, were, they are able, people are able to step away from the grace of God, to step away from salvation because, you know, um, God doesn't force anyone to be saved. If we were to follow the the the, the Calvinists and and those who um proponents of one save always save, as we see it, as the young man said in in in, in the video, you, you have no choice in the matter, and um and so therefore you know God says it, you have to do it. People tend to mix up um you know the foreknowledge of God with predestination. God is omniscient; He knows everything, but He gives us free will, and so therefore we have the choice. We have the choice to to serve Him, and we have the choice to remain. You know, so there are several scriptures um that 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 I'd like to look at. Uh, probably can't look at all of them one time, but I'll start first. I'll probably start where Pastor Atkins left off. It says in in Matthew ten twenty two that and and you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. And I'm reading the New King James Version. So this tells us that um, you know those who endure, it, it's possible not to endure some of the persecutions that 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 and, and some of the sacrifices that we are required to make. Amen. In this gospel, it's possible not to endure and to walk away from it. You know, in in. In, in John 15, from verse 1, it, Jesus says, I am the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. It says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. So here there's a choice. He's telling them, you must abide in me. You must stay. You must remain. And I knew, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. So this suggests that they have a choice. He says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. It says, if anyone does not abide in me, verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned, which is, you know, um, an allusion to, to... to the lake of fire, Jehenna, etc. So the essence is that Jesus says, if any man doesn't abide in me, so the, he's speaking to people. You know, the reference is people who are connected in the vine. People are mm-hmm. already in him. And he says, look here, you, you don't save yourself, but you have the responsibility to stay saved. You know, we don't do works to, to, to be saved, but with the works because we are saved. Our salvation produces works in us. And, and, and so that, that tells us that we need to abide. A, a very wonderful scripture. You know, they like to use this. But Romans 11, 20 to 22, Paul writes and he says, Well said, because of the unbelief they were broken off, speaking of the Jews, and you stand by faith. And he says now to the Gentiles, do not be haughty, but fear. 
For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Therefore, consider the goodness and the severity of God on those who felt severity, but toward you goodness. Listen, if you continue in his goodness, if you continue, that suggests that you have a choice to continue. And it, it says, otherwise, you will be cut off. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 2. You can stop when you're ready, Tyro. Come on, go it ahead, says, man. No hope, brethren. I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, Paul writing says, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. Hear this, you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preach to you unless you believe in vain. So Paul was saying to the Corinthians, you have to hold fast to the word unless your belief, evidently you believed and you were saved. But if you don't hold fast to it, then you are going to be in vain. Galatians 5, 4 says, you have become estranged from Christ. Estranged, meaning you have been separated from him, just like a man estranged from his wife. So evidently they were once joined to Christ. You who attempt to justify by the law, you have fallen from grace. For Colossians 1, 21 to 23 says, And you were once were alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, blameless, above reproach in his sight. If indeed, listen now, if indeed you continue in the faith. So he says, look here. He has presented you holy and blameless if, verse 23, Colossians 1, 23, you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away. So it is essence, you're writing to the Colossian church, save people, baptize and fill. Him say you have to continue and not be moved away. So it is evident that people can be moved away. It says moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under the heaven and which I, Paul, became a minister. You know, and, and we can go on and on, you know, um, in, in, in First Timothy 4, 1, it says, No, the Spirit speak expressly that in a lot of times some will depart from the faith. So mm. these were in the faith in order for them to depart from the faith. Amen. So it doesn't say that they were not truly in the faith. They were there, but they departed from the faith. Amen. You know, it, it's interesting that you raise that point because, and, I, and we're going to take uh, some 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 scriptures from from yes. Pastor Clive, but and then we're going to come back to you because we want to hear the full gamut of the text that address this thing. We have time, man. We have the time, yeah. <laughs> so we want to go through them. So so I will want to go through them systematically. But it's yes. important that you raise that point about departing from the faith because there are those who hold on to this doctrine of once saved, always saved. Yes. Um, and the suggestion is even if you backslide, which is what departing from the faith is, right? Yes. Even if you depart from the faith, you, you are still um, going to make it to heaven. Uh, I, I want to read for you. I won't call the person's name here, but just the, the point that was made. A, a proponent of OSAS, as it's called, once saved, always saved. And, and a pastor, he said, of, of one of these mega churches, he says, even if a believer for all practical purposes becomes an unbeliever, he's even taking it beyond backsliding. Amen. Yes? Becomes an unbeliever, his salvation is not in jeopardy. Listen you know, to this claim, you know, it, 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 it seems wild and not in sync with scripture, but, but it's being taught that, that even if a believer, for all practical purposes, becomes an unbeliever, his salvation is not in jeopardy. Believers who lose or abandon their faith will retain their salvation. This is the claim. And he goes on to say, you and I are not saved because we have an enduring faith. We are saved because at a moment in time, we express faith in, an, in, in our enduring Lord. So he's saying we don't need to endure because God is enduring. That is what he's saying. So, so and I want as we go through these passages that set up that you can depart from the faith, we need to also establish what is the result of departing from the faith. Pastor Clive, what do you have for us here? As I said earlier, it's thin ice that we are treading on. Mm. Um, I would I would I would want to encourage us as the Apostle Paul would want to let us know that we must uh we must be in the spirit so we may not fulfill the lust of the flesh now being in the flesh will cause us to 
embrace these doctrines because we are not no longer want to uh, put in any, let me say, effort into, you know, serving God. And because we don't want to put any effort into it, we're just saying we can just live a life. And I hear Jesus, he's, you know, the, the, the gentleman that we, we listened to earlier, he says that Jesus says, no man is able to pluck me out of, no man is able to pluck them yes. out of Yes, and he says that hand. includes you. <laughs> so you, you yourself can. But I, I'm not sure. That sounds like he's imposing that on the passage, but... Yeah, yeah, but 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 Paul that is talking to a third party. Yes. I, I would want to say this that Paul would let us know that no principality nor power nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. None of those things that are, is able, but if you are not steadfastly in the doctrine, if you are not making yourself available for God. To, to use you, to lead you, to guide you, to, to be in prior. Those, that's where I have my issues. Mm. And, and, and I think that is the, 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 and it's the danger, I think, of this particular doctrine, uh, Pastor King, because it removes the guardrails. It, it, it removes this urgence that we, we ought to uh, seek to, to walk holy and godly. That is the danger of it, yeah? Uh, they may say we are not suggesting uh, that that uh, this doctrine is a license to sin, but what it does is it it it, it opens up the door for licentious living. It isn't yeah. isn't that the case, uh, Pastor King? Yeah, most definitely. You know, and 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 that's that's that is the danger that um you know once you, you can live anyway, you know there is no responsibility to reflect Jesus Christ as the Scripture right says. You know, the, as ambassadors, you know, the, the, the Bible throughout, the, there's so much written, um, even in the epistles on how we should live as saints, reflecting Jesus Christ and, and being examples. Amen. Bless God. And, 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 you know, if it doesn't matter, then you can go ahead. As I say, you can live anyway and, 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 and you are saved. No one judge, you know, can judge you. You know, I, I, unfortunately, I lost a, a friend who believed in this one save always save thing and i confronted him about um you know some things real lifestyle you know that can't be right and and that person just cut me off him just cut me off totally amen bless god because you know they want the, the, the security they want to feel oh. the security of salvation but yet still they want to to serve two masters, so to speak. They and want to fulfill the desires of the flesh. And the Bible says no one can serve two masters. So if 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 one save, always save, and it doesn't matter, why all the admonitions in Scripture? Why all the things like, you know, 1 Corinthians 9, what, 27, where it, where it says you have to put your body under and bring it into subjection, Paul says. He says, this, when I preach to others, I become a castaway. Amen. Mm. So obviously, probably then Paul never knew him situation if <laughs> if one save always save and you know so the scripture speaks about this and the scripture gives us um examples of 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 of, of even people who, who were overcome amen of, of sinfulness amen but there is this thing about faith and the pastor that you spoke about um well-known person i read that quote as well and uh <laughs> so because you didn't i won't call the name but but the bottom line is Faith is not, this is the error. It's not a one-off thing. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And so faith is a daily walk. It is having a relationship with God. That's how you demonstrate your faith. So it's not a one time where you say, oh, I believe and now I'm saved forever. And you don't have to do um, anything else. You know, it is building a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And there is, there is, you know, a scripture that I would like to read. Uh, it's a scripture I love very dearly. In Matthew 7, 21, 23, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, mm. but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So this, this tells you now, you know, not that it is salvation by works, but this eternal salvation, even though we have assurance, it is conditional. The, 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 you know, the guys, these Calvinists, um, they don't want to preach that it's unconditional, so it don't, don't matter. And we fall in the branch of Armenianism 
Arminianism, where we believe that it does matter. Amen. It is based on a condition. So we have to, you have to hear, you have to obey, you have to follow, you have to do what God says. So he says, you know, who does my father will? And he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonderful works in your name? Then he said, he will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So this is where we get it now. It's not about struggling with sin. It is about practicing lawlessness. It is about willfully sinning and living a life that is contrary, amen, to the will of God and to everything that Jesus, um, you know, stands for. These people were practicing lawlessness. That is what will cause your salvation, not to struggle and to mess up now and then. The Bible tells us in, in, in 1 John 1 that, you know, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us. So we will struggle as people. There are some things more than others that we will struggle with. Amen. But once you're trying, God will save you. But when you now forsake the doctrine, forsake the Bible and begin to practice lawlessness and to do opposite, that is when you are you, you 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 can forfeit your salvation so I, you know I'm, I'm i'm looking at the scriptures you know the scripture rather and um you know so we need to do the will of god and we need to you know this is an important part it says i declare i never knew you and that's very important because mm. the, the greek word there for new is 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 similar it is Come, it comes from the Hebrew word used in the Old Testament where it says Adam knew his wife, Eve. In a sense, it denotes a, 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 a personal, intimate relationship. Intimate. So yes. God was saying, this is what living by faith is. You need to have a personal, intimate relationship with me. Amen. Bless God. And this is what keeps you. This is what causes you to abide in the vine. And if you don't have an intimate personal relationship, you're going to end up, you know, doing something that is opposite, that is contrary, that is, that is, a, you know, something that your flesh love. Amen. You know, loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, pride of life. You'll, you'll get caught up there. Amen. And, Bless and God. The, suggestion, yeah. the suggestion, Pastor King, that, yeah. that you can make, you can backslide. You'll be doing all these things, uh, be in a backslidden state and still make it means then if that scripture is to hold true that you just shared about the Lord saying, uh, I did not know you, that yeah. there might be people in heaven wandering around that God doesn't know intimately. <laughs> uh, that is the suggestion. If, yeah. if, if we accept that you are, you, one can backslide and still um, not lose their, their salvation. Uh, you know, you, you touched on a scripture that I wanted us to go back to, um, Rev. You, you said, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Uh, it's one of my favorites, yeah? I, I remember a, a, a brother, uh, brother brother Delhi, sent this scripture to me as a younger convert. And from then, I, I, I fell in love with it. Uh, uh, Paul says, but I keep under my body mm. and, I, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. Before we go to castaway, that 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 phrase I keep under means to basically to bruise, as some scripture translated. I bruise my body. It's it's like a a pugilist giving somebody a black eye. That is the that is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying you have to you have to beat this flesh. Mon yeah, modified. why beat your flesh mm. <laughs> if if you can live anyway and still make it? Why why <laughs> is it required? Yeah, why not just um say, you know, let's let's just live in sin if you can live anyway and still make it. And when Paul goes down and he says, and lest I, I, I become when I preach others, I've become a castaway. That word castaway means rejected, reprobate. That is what that means. Paul is saying, I, Paul, mm. yes, the great apostle, or the least of all the saints, as he describes himself. He says, I can become a castaway if I don't bruise my body. I can become reprobate. That's right. And, and, and if you are in a state of being reprobate, can you reasonably from scripture argue that you can make it? And I think the answer to that is no. How do we know this? If we turn to Galatians chapter 5, um, um, gentlemen, Galatians chapter 5 beginning at about verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such 
like, after which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mighty God. Amen. So if you get to the place where you are practicing these things and you've rejected, uh, you know, it's not a matter of struggling, as you've rightly put it, Pastor King. You've settled in sin. Uh, you cannot inherit the kingdom practicing these things. And that goes against the grain of one saved, always saved. Because Paul says, if you practice these works of the flesh, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Isn't that what that is saying? Because I'm no scholar. I'm putting it to you. Isn't that what that, that scripture is saying? <laughs> Let me just throw this in there before uh, Pastor King come in. Yes. When he talks about mortify, it's the same, it's the same thing as killing the flesh. Mm. He mortified the deeds. The deeds. Mm. Every day, you got to get up. And that, that word mortified means to, to slash, kill. to kill. kill. Yes. To keep uh, from coming alive. Because Paul in Romans chapter 10, he says, I find a law when I'm trying to do good. Why would he point that out to us? Mm. That when every time I'm trying to do good, evil is present with me. Evil, evil is trying to get me to do things that I don't really, really want to do. He wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a, a conversation. You'd be like, oh yeah, that's just all the flesh is. But he's, he, you know, he, he keep on coming back. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. And, he, and, and he's explaining what's really going on, the wrestle between the flesh and the spirit. And they're going to be a wrestle. And that between, wrestle is between the flesh and the Holy Ghost. That's it. But but that doesn't mean that I'm going to give in to the flesh. Hmm. You see, I'm going to allow the spirit of God to, to keep me. That's why I said, no one to him who is able to keep me from falling. So he's now depending solely on God to keep him mm. from falling and present him faultless. Before his, his throne of grace. Right? Uh, Pastor King, uh, if Paul is saying in Galatians, if you practice these things, yeah, you, you, you can't inherit the kingdom. Yeah, so no, no. you be one saved, always saved, if you practice these things, Paul is saying you can't inherit the kingdom. Am yeah. I reading that correctly? You are, are, are absolutely correct. You're hitting the nail on the head. Because, you know, um, yeah, and, and that's what I referred to earlier. You know, those who practice sin. So, Paul, what you mentioned, Pastor Atkins, Paul, in, in, in Romans 7, spoke about the struggle. The struggle. And, and, and the struggle is fine. You're struggling. You're fighting. You're, you're doing your best. And under God, you know, God is the author. Really yes. You're fighting. You right. But those now who put off all restraints, you know, don't need to be temperate. And if you if you go down in that scripture, it talks about the works of the spirit. And temperance mm. is one of them. You know, so that ability to exercise self-control that 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 we don't give in to, amen, the 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 all the works of the flesh. And um, so definitely if you are practicing these things, the Bible says you can't enter the kingdom of of, of God. And no, this was a warning. One save is always saved. Come on, Rev man. <laughs> This was a warning to people of God, people who were already saved. You remember, he was writing to the church. Mm -hmm. He was writing to Christians, and he was warning them. Amen. And and and, and this is the thing, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians, when it tells us about the, the, the two, you know, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, you know, um, and what the God against these things, you know, the, the, the scripture tells us in, in 2 Timothy 4, he says, for demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. And so therefore it is possible to, to so love the world and to so be overcome by the things of the world that we begin to practice sin. Amen. And, um, and, 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 and that's what, that's what Demas did. He practiced uh, sin and that led to him forsaking the gospel. It's not that he wasn't saved before. You know, the, the scripture God gives, uh, you know, Jesus Christ when he was on earth gave this, this parable, you know, of, of, of a servant who, when he left, and this was a servant, he was a part of the household. He says, when he left, this servant, he, he you know, when the servant saw that the master was, was delayed, that the servant began to live in a particular way. He began to do right. some things. Yeah. And um, beat the other servants, that sort mm. of thing. And um, when when Jesus came, you know, the Bible tells us that when he came, he says that, um, and, and I'm looking for it, in Luke 12, 45, 46, it says, but if the servant says in his heart, 
My master is the lane is coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and to drink and be drunk. And the master of that servant shall come on a day when he is not looking for him and an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the unbelievers. So here, this man was not an unbeliever. Oh, no. Come on. But in his punishment, he's yeah. going to get a portion with the unbelievers. He was a part of the household. He was he had assigned duties, but he neglected to do what his master wanted him to do. And this is it come, it ties it back to Matthew 7 that we must do what the master wants us to do. Amen. Bless mm. God. And, and 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 yes, go ahead. Sorry, we're up on the break. It's riveting stuff right here on the Apostles' Doctrine with me, Pastor Garfield King and Pastor Clive Atkinson right here in studio. Uh, we are discussing what the Apostles' Doctrine has to say about this teaching, about once saved, always saved, otherwise known as the doctrine of eternal security. We're weighing and measuring this teaching, and it's becoming uh, more and more popular these days. So we're weighing it, and we're measuring it here right on the Apostles' Doctrine, and we're trying to determine for you, our valued listeners and viewers, if it is found wanting in the balance. More on the other side of the break. All in one dollar store. All in one. Get your groceries, over-the-counter drugs, home decor, bathroom, laundry, and kitchen accessories, comforters, blankets, beauty, stationery, events, and birthday supplies, children toys, kids' clothes, sneakers, sandals, hats, track suits, winter spring jackets, and so much more. Visit them today. 8904 Street, 118 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta. Open every day. Call 587-977-2. 2343 email waka1041 at gmail.com all in one dollar store Saffron Caribbean Delight, your one-stop Caribbean cuisine restaurant with their tasty oxtail, curry chicken, jerk chicken, and stew beef. Not to mention their weekend specials, fried fish and soup. Come out and get a taste of the Caribbean. Located at 8155-112 Avenue or call to order at 780-474-9005. Opening hours from Tuesdays to Thursday from 1 to 7 p.m. And Friday and Saturday, 1 to 8 p.m. Saffron Caribbean Delight. It's not about the quantity, but the quality. Top African Fashion, the one-stop shop for all your African needs for men, women, and children. Top, Top African, African Fashion, we sell anchor and lace fabrics, wigs, jewelry, African traditional beads, matching shoes and bags for ladies. We also carry shoes for men and kids, belts, and so much more. Top, Top African, African Fashion, fashion. for all season, occasion, and celebration, church, wedding, and graduation. Top, Top African, African fashion. fashion, open every day. Visit us today at 9338 118 Avenue, Edmonton, or call 780 22 Four seven three three nine. Top African, African fashion. fashion. HGG Radio. There's a lava flow. Join Pastor Dean A. Brown for the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. The word of the Lord says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, brought to you by the Christ Alive Christian Center, 427. 17 to 19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. HGG Radio. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads 
at hggradio.ca. That's ads at hggradio.ca. Or call us today at 825-343-4486. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you so very much for staying with us right here on the Apostles Doctrine and HGG Radio. We're coming to you live from Edmonton in Canada. Uh, with me in studio is Pastor Clive Atkinson. And of course, join us via video link uh, all the way from uh, New York uh, in the US is Pastor Garfield King. Gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with us. And to our valid listeners and viewers, thank you so much for making it the Apostles Doctrine. Uh, we, we, we see a number of people um, in the chat sharing their comments. We just want to share uh, a few of them with you and just give uh, a couple of shout outs. We see Ken Roy Murray, Minister Ken Roy Murray saying, uh, we really have to teach our children to ensure they are not deceived by these false teachings. Uh, and uh, uh, Sir Panton uh, is saying, I agree, uh, Sir Murray, and the fact that he used pieces and patches of scriptures in such a convincing manner is very, very dangerous. I gather he's referencing the video we showed at the top of the program, setting up what is believed uh, by th those who seek to promulgate this doctrine of, of one saved, all sa always saved, uh, this doctrine of eternal security. Uh, Nollywood Shanika says, true God gives man a choice. And uh, let me see who else we have here. Uh, Lorraine Dockery says, Be ye holy for I am holy, saith the Lord. Uh, we just want to take a few more before uh, we go uh, back into the discussion. Uh, I, I, another one from Sister Lorraine Dockery saying, There is no good thing in the flesh, Romans uh, chapter 7. So we're weighing and measuring today this, this business of the doctrine of eternal security. Once saved, always saved. That's what that teaching proposes. Is it in step with scripture? And the two eminent members on the panel today say, no, this is not supported uh, by the teachings of the apostles. It's not supported uh, by scripture. Let's jump on over to the book of James uh, chapter 5. I'd like for us to begin there, uh, Pastor King, uh, and help us in understanding this one. In James chapter 5, verse 19, and we read verse 20 as well, the final verse in the chapter, it says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. And shall hide a multitude of sins. And I'm reading that because in 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 the proponents of uh, the the doctrine of eternal security suggest that once you are born again, you can't be unborn. Uh, and that is that is why uh, uh, one of the reasons they seek to hold on to it. You cannot be unborn. But here the scripture is saying that. If you convert someone who errs from the truth, and you must have the truth in order to err from it, so clearly this is talking about someone who was saved, uh, then such a one is saved from death. So once you are born again, you can die a spiritual death, I gather is what this is suggesting to us. Amen. And um, so exactly, and I, I just want to emphasize, the scripture says, brethren, brethren, speaking to the saved, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and so that is quite clear that he was speaking to a saint. If one wanders from the truth, you know, you have to turn him back. Remember, you know, Hebrews 4 verse 1 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, and any of you should seem to come short of it. Amen. And so the, the consistent tenor of scripture is that salvation is something, as Hebrew says, you know, oh, oh, can we escape if we ne neglect so great salvation? When we look at the parables of Jesus, the lost coin, the, 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 you know, the lost sheep, and you know, the master left the ninety and nine, went for the lost sheep, bring back the one, the prodigal son, and so, essence, these are all speaking to the fact that you know, one among the fellowship can leave the fellowship, and so, yes, one who is born cannot be unborn, amen. However, one who is born can, can walk away from, can neglect some of the, 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 the rights and privileges that they have. So, for example, I have, I have two daughters and, um, you know, they'll always be my daughters. But the truth is that one of them 
can divorce the family. Children are doing that now. They can Not divorce the me. family. They can walk away and say they, they, don't, they don't, don't want anything to do with this family. And, and I lose all contact. I, I, I can't talk to them. If we have family gatherings at Christmas or whatever, they might not come, they might not show up. So in essence, fellowship has been broken. And I can go ahead and take the step of probably disinheriting them, not leaving anything in my will. So it doesn't mean that the person was never my child. They're still my child. But the bottom line is they can walk away from that familial relationship and that comfort and that care and protection that is within um, the family structure. And so the scripture speaks consistently of this, that you can walk away you can break fellowship amen and those who are lost you know we need to having been brethren we need to go and seek them to try our best to bring them back amen so um this scripture clearly states that it, it hits at the heart of the one save always save um thing you must remain hallelujah to to ensure that your eternal salvation Amen. You don't lose out. You don't fall short. And once you stay with God, we have that assurance. But, you know, again, God gives man free will. And we have seen it from Adam. You know, people are saying, so why, why, why would God save you if you know you're going to leave? Then why did God make Adam and he knows he was going to sin? We see, you know, Adam walked away, you know, Satan, Lucifer, the angels. We have many examples, even Judas. So it is, it is man has free will. And, and the, 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 the essence of love is to have free will and to choose to love somebody, to choose to fellowship with them. And, and that's what God wants. He gives us free will. God knows the future. He knows everything. Amen. But he does not make our choices for us. And so, you know, Tyrone, I'd, I'd like to say, and Pastor Askins, you know, when the Bible talks about this thing of, 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 of God's foreknowledge, foreknowledge and predestination, you know, that term predestination, you know, yes. it, it, it really speaks to God has a plan and, and his plan will come true. So he has a plan for the church and the church will be victorious. He has a plan, you know, that for Jesus Christ to come and to die, which he did, that we couldn't alter that. And so there will be a victorious church, but as to whether or not, so the church is predestined to victory. So, but as to whether or not we are a part of it, it is up to us if we take part. And that's where your choice and your free will comes in. Amen. Mm. Mm. So, so of course, I, I, and I'm happy you touched on that because this this issue of predestination is a major plank. Yes, this idea of divine selection. And in that video we we just heard the yeah. the the point was made that though God divinely selects those who are saved, He also, in the same breath, wanted to reject that um, God damns people in advance as well. So. Yeah. Because that can be problematic. But if you hold one to be true, uh, isn't it reasonable and logical, um, um, uh, Pastor Clive or Pastor King, that if you hold that God handpicks you to be saved out of everybody else before everything, <laughs> that he also handpicks those to be damned? Uh, can you separate those two things? Well, number one, that's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever, he did not say that, that, that some people, it's whosoever, is you who make the choice. So that doesn't stand, that, that, that's not something that, that's going to hold up any, any, any. any it can't stand up to, to scriptural scrutiny. But pa Pastor King, what do you make of that? Is it, because we, can we just argue, and doesn't it make the argument lopsided that, if we say God chooses mm -hmm. those who are saved, but he doesn't choose those to be damned, uh, can we make those two arguments? Isn't that inconsistent? No, I mean, the thing is, those things go together. They can't be mutually exclusive. So what they're saying is that God chooses some people to be saved, and then he chooses some people um, mm -hmm. for eternal mm -hmm. suffering and damnation. And if God does that, it hits at the heart of, you know, it, it violates the scripture. You know, it, it says that God is partial. It, it, it would paint him as a wicked God. What would make him different, you know, from the mm -hmm. devil that would want some people, you know, to be damned? You know, God says, you know, it is not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, That's you know, right. God doesn't want man to be, to, 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 to suffer for eternity, you know, and he has provided an opportunity for man to be saved. And so if, if, if he chooses some people, which makes him partial, and, um, you know, then he, he would choose some people, to be damned as well. And, uh, and, 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 and that is not consistent with the scripture. Jesus uh, Christ came to save all men. Yes. 
So, so when it says, uh, because this is another passage that they quote to support this, and I want to come back to predestination, but yes. let's just drill down into, into this a bit. So when it says, when the scripture says, Jacob have I loved, mm-hmm. but Esau have I hated. Before they did any uh, good or evil, God chose to love one from the womb. And the other, he said, no, you know, I really can't deal with this guy. You know, uh, Talk to us, Pastor King. How do we interpret that? All right. So, you know, there are actually several ways to to look at that. And, um, you know, there are some things that God, you know, having foreknowledge of our choices and what we will do, you know, um, decided to include us in in some things. And I think that is one of the things of of electron. So God God knows what we're going to do. God knows our choice. He doesn't force us um, to do. But God can look at the choice that we, we make. And, um, and 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 God can have respect for our choices and 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 reward us so you know I, I think um it 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 was in in that sense you know if we look you have to look at that entire chapter in a deeper sense to to get a full um understanding I don't think God was being unfair you know it it was speaking initially you know the writer was talking about the church and he was um an Israel and Israel losing out on salvation, etc. And he was making um, the point of, of, of God's choices and selection. So the, the, the essence of the scripture is, is really that um, God knew God knew the choices that, that, that Esau was going to make. And, and and the thing person. we need to understand is that God operates in eternity. And this is where now it is difficult for us in our finite minds to understand some of the things where God is concerned. I've often said it. Anytime we understand everything about God, we're greater than him. You know, so, so, so the bottom line is God yep. operates in eternity. And sometimes, you know, God will act based on his, his, his knowledge in eternity. He will make ah. sense, statements based on his, his picture operating in eternity and his omniscience. He and can't his, make a and statement like that, the divorced of his, of his, of his, of his, um, Omniscience is basically yes. what you're saying. He already knows of, of those unique attributes. Yes. Nobody else has access to that kind of cachet of information. Yes. Just God, yes. yes? Just God. Uh, and, 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 and note, you know, he did not cause Esau to make a choice. Right. So Esau decided, you know, is his choice. God didn't tell him, say, look here, sell out your birthright, you know, because you want some. It seems we are having a little difficulty with the connection with Pastor King there. But interesting point, as, as we try, try to have him rejoin us, Rev. Interesting point there from, mm-hmm. from, 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 from Pastor King about that scripture. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. But, and, and this term predestinate, that word, is, is, it, it causes a lot of issues uh, for, for persons uh, trying to interpret scripture. But uh, if we can go to Romans chapter uh, uh, eight, where where Paul uses this term predestinate, he says he says in Romans eight twenty nine. You're back with us, Pastor King. Yes, wonderful. Sorry. God be praised. So it says in, in Romans eight uh, twenty nine, for whom he he did foreknow, uh, to know beforehand is is what that is saying. Yes. Uh, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And, and it's interesting what that word predestinate means because some people think of predestination as a final destination, but that's not what it suggests in the Greek. What predestinate suggests in the Greek is to limit in advance, which means God will do everything in his power to try to save you. So he will build a fence round about you mm. yeah, uh, to try to keep you, to edge you in. But there is nothing that stops you from climbing over that fence. Mm. Because that is what predestination suggests. It suggests to set a limit to in advance. That's right. And it does not take away your free will because you cannot interpret predestination and impinge upon another scriptural premise of free will because right. man has free will. And we cannot have the passages um, uh, butting heads. If you have that, that means the interpretation is not correct because free will is also something that is recorded in scripture. God put Adam and Eve in the garden, Rev, mm-hmm. and said, of every tree in the garden you can eat, but of this one you can't eat. 
That means they had a choice. That is what free will was there from the beginning. And they chose to do the wrong thing, right? So you and I are struggling with all sorts of things to this day, right? But free will was there from the garden. And God instituted that. So, so, so predestination is really God saying to you, I will do everything in my power to try to make sure that you make it into the rapture. Rev. Am I am I going somewhere, or or uh, the interpretation is incorrect? Pass the king. I mean, I, I think your interpretation is correct. If if predestination is is you know again, God as as predestined you know is is divine plan which must you know um, happen. But in terms of personal salvation, you know, if 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 God had predestined some people and not others. To go to heaven then why evangelize why did he give us the great commission and tell us to go into all the world and, mm -hmm. and, and to spread you know this this gospel you know and yeah, uh, why do we pray for friends do. and family he has, you know? give, he has to give you something to do he can't just have your book <laughs> what about those who might advance that that you have to do something to do you, you, i mean god can't just leave you here not doing anything but but clearly if if the that's a very valid point if god yeah. says I, I go out into all the world and teach nations to observe all things. He, he clearly, um, uh, he wants us to do something. But but that predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son speaks to setting a limit to God. is yes. God wants you to know that you have more than a fighting chance to make it. Yes. That is what he's saying to us. You have more than a fighting chance to make it there's a there's a there are a couple of other scriptures that they put on the table and i want to us to look at another one that those who put forward uh predestination would 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 uh uh they that they that predestination the doctrine of uh eternal security uh one of the passages quoted is in in the book of 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 jude i i believe it's jude one ver jude no, well there's only one chapter in jude so it's jude 20 um verse 24 and, and Jude 24 says, and I, I want you to help me with this one. Uh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling mm. and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Uh, it is now, it, it, this is being interpreted, uh, Rev, uh, as meaning that uh, he, since he's able to keep you from falling, you're, 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 once you're saved, you're always saved. Is that what you, got, you get from that passage? No, no. God has the ability to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to fall down. Mm. Right? That doesn't mean that you're not going to um, um, physically fall or fall in, in, in a sin, spiritual sense. Yes. In a spiritual sin. But God Himself has the ability. To keep you, so then that keeping you is that this is what the Bible says. The Bible says the righteous fall at seven times. The righteous. And gets back up again. But he gets up again. But the Bible goes on and says, No one to whom is who is able to keep you. Mm. So am I being righteous and I fall? And he's saying he's able to keep you from falling. We need to understand this that when the Bible is saying this, he's saying that you have a God who can hold you together. In whatever state you find yourself. Mm. That means when you're down, it doesn't mean that you're out. He's there that you can come back to him as God. And he's here to present you and says, Listen, me. the hurt that you felt, I can deal with that hurt. I present you without the pain, the hurt of that mistake that you have made. That doesn't mean you don't go to God and tell him that you're sorry for the for what you have done. There's a requirement to repent. Uh, if if I'm hearing you correctly, Revy, you you're saying that we serve a God who is who is able to to, to love us through the personal crisis of a struggle with sin. In spite of what and where you find yourself, He mm. loves you because the Bible tells us that Jesus Himself was tempted like we are, but without sin. He understands our pain. He understands our struggle. He understands, but does that does, He's not give us no right to keep to to, to keep on sinning or live. In sin, he says, shall we continue in sin? That grace be above. God forbid. Can, can I say one thing on that? Because that's ahead. an interesting scripture. 
um, ministers. The, the, the thing is, in that same Jude one, and, and this is the problem where people get into, when they don't rightly divide the word, where they don't look at context, when they just take one scripture and, and you just use it, you don't look what comes before, you don't look at what comes after, you don't look at the, the historical um, context, you don't look at the culture, you don't look at what the grammar is saying. So the essence, if we look at that same Jude from ver verse 3, it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for One the faith thing. which was once delivered you. So here is encouraging them that look here, man, you have to fight to ensure that you stay in this thing. In verse 21, it says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So after admonishing them to contend, to fight, and to do what is necessary to keep yourself in the love of God, then he says, look here, you know, in your effort, your effort might be sufficient, but guess what? This God, this only wise God, is the one who is able to keep you from falling and present your faultless. But nonetheless, it is he's the art and finisher your faith tonight. He's him going to the work, but you have a responsibility to keep yourself in his love and to contend for the faith. That's what he was saying. We're talking and in one... essence, if, if, you, if you don't contend, it would suggest that um, you can fall away. If you don't fight and keep yourself in his love, it means that you can fall out of his love. But, you know, if you are willing and you will mm -hmm. struggle, you know, God will, he will present your faultless. He will do the work. So it's not, we can't save ourselves, you know. We no. can't save ourselves. Our responsibility is to believe and to to be, to be obey. To believe, believe and, and obey. obey. That's all. But trust and obey. <laughs> there is no other way as the, the, the song says. But, but we're discussing this doctrine of eternal security. Once saved, always saved, as it's popularly known. Is it consistent with scripture? Based on the sound of it, it sounds it's being weighed and measured and it sounds as if it's wanting in the balance. We're up on our next break. When we come back, we will dive some more into what the scripture says about this teaching. Calgary, join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross over. Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm blessed. Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team. Live in concert. Doors open at 6 30 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60 Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at Eventbrite. Dot CA or call 780-284-3450. That's come worship the king. Calgary. See you there. My soul. Start to clap your hand if you really love Jesus. Edmonton, get ready for Come Worship the King on April 6, 2024. Hosted by MR Productions. Come and experience the ultimate night of praise and worship featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross over. Michael Reed, Chanel Edwards, Glenn Barnes, and Pastor Alric O'Connor. Special appearances from Chosen Generation. And we are his. MC Crystal Reed at the Citadel International Church, 9253 48th Street, Edmonton. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. Showtime, 6 p.m. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or or call 780-284-3450. That's Come Worship the King, King Edmonton. See you there. My soul. HGG Radio. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize 
specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 calling all believers are you continuing steadfastly in the apostles doctrine join us right here on hgg radio mondays to fridays from 2 p.m to 4 p.m mst and 4 p.m to 6 p.m est for a new and exciting bible discussion program the Apostles Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's the Apostles Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MSD. Come to the fellowship, stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Everywhere you went, man, my Lord was doing good. Welcome back, welcome back, uh, viewers and listeners to HGG Radio. You're inside live, The Apostles' Doctrine. And we are discussing this uh, teaching known as the Doctrine of Eternal Security, uh, more popularly known as Once Saved, Always Saved. Is it in step with Scripture? Is it lining up with what the Lord Jesus and the Apostles taught? That is what we're weighing and measuring today to see if it is found wanting uh, in the balance. And, and Pastor King, you touched on a very critical point. And it's a point I was trying to make earlier that I would love for us to uh, look back at uh, again. Uh, nuance in Scripture. Because you may very well read a passage and it may seem to suggest an extreme position. And, and you cannot interpret that in and of itself without taking the entire Bible as a whole to see if there's any other passage anywhere else in Scripture that addresses this particular issue. As the Bible says, line upon line, a precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Yes, that is how we have to uh, seek to, to, to read. And the doctrine of, uh, of uh, eternal security seeks to uh, offend a number of, uh, of, of scriptural principles, yes? It, it, it seeks to offend a number of scriptural principles, and it also is seemingly, I, I think, even more dangerously than anything else, is to create this false sense of security in the minds of believers. That is perhaps the predominant, preeminent danger of the of the doctrine of eternal uh, security. Uh, we we want to, I want to just... Give another a couple passage uh, that uh, that have been passages that have been used to support this doctrine, uh, and, and and as a sub uh, heading under this uh, big broader heading of the doctrine of eternal security is the preservation of the saints uh, doctrine. Yes, and and the one that we read earlier from Jude, uh, they've used that to support that, and another one is found in John ten verse twenty eight twenty nine. We just want to uh, dissect it here. It reads. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never perish is the emphasis uh, for those who, who hold this scripture to suggest uh, uh, the, the, that your salvation, that you're, you're eternally secure. Yes, you're eternally secure in your salvation. Uh, they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Uh, and the suggestion is that uh, this includes, when it says no man, it includes you. Uh, but but, 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 me, but my, my reading of this, uh, Rev, is, is that this, this is talking about a third party. Yeah. It says no man can pluck you. No man can forcibly come and take you out of the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Not that you lose all choice. In the matter, and if you decide to God, you know, your hand too cozy, and I can't take all this good treatment. I need to leave and go somewhere else. Pastor I can say that, that can't be what the Bible is saying. No, 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 no. And, and God is not going to um, force you in staying with Him if you don't want to stay with Him. Mm. So you have a choice, right? Um, you have to work out, the Bible says that we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. 
I know the next verse, which is verse 13, said that it's God that, that is inside of you. That's why the Holy Ghost is there to help you to, 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 to say no to sin. Mm. The Holy Ghost is there to give you uh, that, that, that the power to overcome sin. That's why Jesus says in Acts chapter um, um, 1, verses 8, and he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So that power there is to help you, to give you the, 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 the anointing that you need to overcome the things that you're going to pass through. Um, Jesus prayed a prayer and he says, I pray thee, Father, that you may not take them out of the world, but mm. you may keep them My God, come on. That's in the right. world. He he's praying that prayer because uh, 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 he know that they're if they if they hate me they're gonna hate them. Mm. But he's praying for them that God may keep them in in the world. So you and I, there's a passage scripture that I want um, us to look at as well. Um, Jesus in his writing in Saint uh, Matthew twenty three, he says, "Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrite, for he compassed sea and land to make one proselyte." A proselyte is a a believer. A believer. Convert. Convert. So listen now. To make one proselyte, and when he is made, when he become a believer, he make him twofold. Then the child of hell <laughs> and himself. So a believer can be a child of hell. <laughs> God. Right. So My you God. can you can compass your land, and then I did a little study on that thing. You could put on conferences and conferences, revival upon revival, to make one person come to the Lord. Huh? Mm. Fly your best preacher into town. Put him up at the best hotel. Huh? But when they come and they got saved, they look at your life, what you're practicing, what you're teaching, all that. And then now they start to do exactly what you are doing. And the Bible says they have now become twice a child of hell. A child of hell than yourself. In other words, you're already going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a laughing matter, I'm telling you. It's, a, it's quite That's serious. Just definitely, if you lead somebody into, into false doctrine, you That's know, what it you is. Just, yeah, you can meet them. But I'd like to go back to the scripture that you raised, Tyrone, in John 10. Yes. Because, you know, they, they like to use the scripture and said, John 10, 27, and I give them eternal life, etc. But this is where we need to now commit ourselves to a proper um, hermeneutic. You know, how do we interpret scriptures and how do we approach, even as apostolics, you That's know, right. to find truth? So if we go back just a verse above, it says, my sheep hear my voice in verse 27, and I know them and they follow me. So here now you have the sheep of their own volition who knows his voice and they choose to follow him. And then now, you know, that proceeds. And because they know his voice and follow him, because they decide to follow him, he says in verse 28, and I give and I give unto them eternal life. No, and they shall never perish. Me. Neither he shall any man pluck any, any man out of them a hand. So evidently he's talking about external forces. Forces external to the relationship between him and the sheep. Again, oh. their means of interpretation yes. and, and their exegesis is wrong. So their eisegesis, they're reading their own meaning into the text. But okay. the sheep of the first hear his voice and to follow him. So the sheep, they have a personal, they have a responsibility to follow him. And he says, when they him. follow me, then I will give them eternal life. And reading, no man yeah. shall pluck them out of my hand. Amen. I'll so again, reading. it is about, you know, reading the scriptures and looking at it in a holistic manner. The thing is, the scriptures, the Bible don't contradict itself. And if the, if the majority of scriptures is saying one thing and one seems to be out, we have to look to reconcile it with the rest. What could it mean? It couldn't mean that these things are saying opposite because clearly um, the preponderance of scriptures are telling you that people can walk away from their salvation. People can fall away from the promise, etc. And Amen. can end up in hell. I, I, and, yes. and we, we, you know, people don't like to use the, the word these days, but... But yes, you can live a life that can yeah. lead you um, to hell, and people need to be apprised of the fact. Let's 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 look at a scripture that I think blows this uh, entire thing out the water as well. Hebrews chapter five, verse nine, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. It didn't stop there. Unto all them that obey him. Mm. 
That is who is the author of eternal salvation for those who choose to obey. And that principle is coming from time immemorial because the book tells us in the Old Testament that obedience is better than sacrifice Amen. and to hearken than the fat of rams. Yes, but listen at what the writer of the Hebrews, uh, Hebrews uh, book is telling us. He says, uh, uh, let me just read from verse 8 again. Uh, I didn't read verses before. I, it's in 9. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. If you want to be eternally saved, it's tying that to obedience. Yes. That is what the Bible is saying. So if you are disobedient and choose not to follow the teachings of the Lord, how can you say once I've gotten saved, it means I'm always saved? Let me know. Help me, Rev, because both of you are, are way more, <laughs> you know, school than I am in these matters. Talk to me because maybe I'm maybe my my what you call it, Rev Jesus is um is not on point. Uh, talk to me, man. What is this saying? What is this scripture saying? Is the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him? What if you choose not to obey him? But but Jesus tell you that if you love me, you must keep my commandments. Mm. If you so, love me, you must keep my so, so we can deduce from that. If you don't keep his commandments, it means you don't love him. Yeah, it's safe to deduce that, right? So if you decide that you stop keeping his commandments, it means you don't love him. So is it safe to deduce that or that is a stretch? It is safe to say so if you don't obey. Pastor King, I want to make sure we are... I mean, the, the, the Bible clearly tells us that love is known by the actions. It's uh, actions, you know. Christ demonstrated his love, commended it, that even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So, so if you say, now nah, obey you, it means that you don't love him. <laughs> well, well, that's that's what it says. Because love right. is demonstrated in action. So if it John. says that, if it says that, here's where I'm going with this. Just, just... And what um, I mean, you have to note that, you know, when it says obey, not mean that you don't falter now and then. No, right. You not know. saying that at all. Not yeah, saying that yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, meaning, yes, you 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 are actively trying to live in accordance with the yeah. scripture. Yes? yes. So so if you if you say though, uh, look here, I'm saved, but guess what? You know, I'm now follow your teachings in the Lord Jesus, but I'm still one go ahead. It, it, so if you say I'm not following, it, you, we can reasonably deduce that you decide that you're not going to love him. We can reasonably deduce that, right? Based on scripture. Definitely. So if 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 you in that state, because you were once saved, can still make it into heaven, <laughs> you know what that suggests? It suggests that there'll be people in heaven who don't love him. Yeah. Are we are we okay with saying these things? These are the implications, Rev, at least in my mind. These are the implications that can, if can I just give you a quick question, script, yeah, quick go quick ahead. to support that um minister read. You know, in, in Second um, Thessalonians 1, yes. it says, you know, that God will be coming back. It says, verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God uh -huh. and that obey not, obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Now, the thing is, you know, even if people were predestinated, God would be unfair to judge them for not obeying when he decided that they wouldn't uh. obey. So, so, but nonetheless obedience is tied up in this thing because you can't separate faith from obedience. And that's what James was trying to say. It was not contradicting in Paul. The work that, that we show our faith by is being obedient to the word that we receive from the Lord Jesus. May, may I see that point and escalate it further by throwing into the mix yes. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. That's right. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Oh. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Being and was Paul writing to? He was writing to the Christians. Of Galatia. Isn't, <laughs> isn't that what the book says? Yeah. Uh, so, so he says, being a deceived, God is not mocked. What, whatever man sow it, that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. If we sow to our flesh, and again, we have to make the distinction, we're not talking about people who have struggles. 
Yeah, are we not talking that people who've backslidden and are we explaining that scripture in Hebrews that spoke about those ones mm -hmm. enlightened? They're talking about people who are in apostasy. It's not just talking about mere backsliding. You've become reprobate. You are an apostate. You've denied, you've renounced the salvation. That is what it's talking about. And that's why the Bible says there's only one unpardonable sin, you know. And that's the other thing we need to go to rev. If there's one unpardonable sin and no sin shall enter there, if you are guilty of this sin after you've been saved, how can you make it in? Yeah, because the thing is, you know, it's that unpardonable sin. When you blaspheme, you know, Against the Holy Ghost, when you say that the power of God to save and you attribute that to devils, what you have done is really cut off yourself from any possibility of being saved. That's why mm -hmm. it's unpardonable. You have removed yourself. You have precluded yourself because the power, the only power that can save you. Amen. You are, you, you are saying that this is a demonic power. It is not right. Then how oh, shall you be saved? You know? Listen, <laughs> I, we need to say to the folks who are struggling, uh, Rev, because I think the uh, let me tell you what I believe gave rise to this doctrine, Rev. And this is just me um, using my, a license here. Mm -hmm. There is... A, a, a terror of, of worrying about whether or not you're saved. You know, the devil often likes yeah. to whisper that into the ears of believers. Yes. Especially if you're struggling with, with yes. anything. You know, trying to convince you that you're, that you're not saved. Yes. Yeah? And, and I think that is what gave rise to this erroneous doctrine. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, if people decide that, look, oh, you know, the devil is trying to tell us that, no, once you're saved, you're always saved. Because when you see the devil trying to convince you that you're not really saved. I mean, you get the Holy Ghost. Why oh, the devil not come over your shoulder, man, after that? Yeah. And say, yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you're sure? You know, yes. you're sure, you're sure yeah. you get the Holy Ghost? That kind you of know, a thing. But can I tell you, Minister? Yes, go ahead, please. That, that is one reason you're so correct. Because people want to ensure that, that you know, they are saved. You don't have to worry. And I want to tell you, you know, you, you are short of salvation if you stay in Christ. You don't have to worry. You know, um, once you try your best to live for him. But there's another thing as well. The thing is, when Calvin and those people, you know, even from Luther, after the, the, the Reformation, the Protestant churches were so opposed to the salvation by works that the Catholic Church did then, that they went to the far extreme to say that there's absolutely no works that can be done. And so what they did in going to the far extreme is to say that, look here, no matter what you do, you're going to be saved. So that's, a, that's another reason as well, which is, which is an error because the Bible tells us that, you know, um, once you are saved, the Holy Ghost produces good works in you. And you must yield and allow the Holy Ghost to produce those good works in you. But, you know, can I read one last scripture? No, ma, we have our time for a couple more. We have about ten, nine minutes to go. Go ahead, Minister. <laughs> So I, I just want to leave as my final scripture from, from Hebrews 10. I'm going to read from 36 to about 30, um, 26 to 31. It says, for if we sin willfully after uh -huh. that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much more sure sorrow punishment suppose he should be taught worthy who had trodden underfoot the son of god and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sacrificed an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace for we know him that had said vengeance belongeth to me i will recompense it the lord and again the lord shall judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living right. god and so i want to say that because the bible says those who are saved if you willfully sin and you turn away then judgment will be your part because right. the blood sacrifice that was appropriated to your life it's as if you have cast it off now somebody say if you're redeemed you can't be unredeemed uh, you know you, you know i remember um, Jesus telling a parable of a king who forgave two men. And one man, rather, he forgave one man who owed him, you know, like a hundred pence or something like that. And then this man had another fellow servant who owed him like 10,000. And, and, and when, the, when the master found out, he said, look here, you know, if I forgave you, they shouldn't you have forgiven your brethren? And then he said, you know, he took back that pardon and, and cast the man into outer darkness. And that scripture ended when Jesus said, your heavenly father will do likewise if you do not forgive others. Mm -hmm. So the essence is the blood can be applied and appropriated to your life. But if you don't live according to, you know, oh, God wants you to live to fellowship with him, you can lose out.
Amen. And, 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 and let, let's, uh, and uh, Pastor King, if I could just throw into the mix here again, once again, Second Peter 2. Yes. It, it says, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Yes. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Listen to the Bible. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. That doesn't sound like it's describing somebody who has made it into the into the Minister kingdom. Reed, you can drop the mic and puff up the program now. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that certainly doesn't sound as if it's describing someone who has lived righteously and somehow has made it in. Uh, without, you know, any form of repentance or whatever. Simply because you were initially saved, it means you're always saved. Uh, for people who are worrying about their salvation and whether or not they're saved, because I think that is the central issue here, uh, Pastor King uh, and Pastor Atkinson. I want you to try and encourage the saints uh, before we close. Uh, is it that our salvation is more secure than we believe? Even though we don't believe in one saved, always saved, we don't believe that accords with the apostles' doctrine at all. Uh, how can we encourage saints who might be struggling to know that their salvation is secure, more secure uh, than, than perhaps they initially believed? Not that there is eternal security, meaning anything where you do goes. Yeah, that, that is a, a recipe for disaster. How do we encourage the saints, um, Pastor King, beginning anything? Amen. Bless God. So, you know, I'd, 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 I'd say just as you, I'd reiterate, as you said, I, th I think our salvation is more sure than we think. Um, many times we are, the struggle is real with sin because we have the sinful nature that, that we don't get rid of. Though we have the Holy Ghost, we have the power to break and to overcome. But, you know, we, we live by faith and we grow each day. And God understands and God helps us. And, and so this process after you've been saved, a sanctification takes place where you're being transformed into the image of God and will not be delivered from this, this the, these struggles until, you know, the rapture comes and, and we'll receive a glorified body, etc. But in the meantime, you know, all God requires of us, you know, and I'm speaking to anybody, all God requires, yes, you will struggle, sometimes you will fall and the scriptures understand. And God is the author and finisher of your faith. He will help you. He will help you to make it. He will do it. We can't do it without him. But nonetheless, he asks that we maintain fellowship. He asks that we abide in him. He asks that we do our best to be obedient to his word. And that's all that you have to do. You know, I'm always concerned when it comes to communion services. One of the most important things. And people don't come because they're afraid that boy, them so sinful because they made a mistake in the week or, or whatever. You know, it is not about that. The Bible says if we repent god is faithful and just to forgive us amen. we just need to be true with god and do our best to live for him and and you will be saved amen 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 pastor clive what, what how do you encourage the saints who might be worrying about how secure their salvation is let me use the bible the bible says that for this is the love of god that we that we keep his commandment and his commandment are not grievous mm. Uh, when we keep the commandment of God, we know that the commandments of God are not grievous. The next verse goes on and says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I want us to know today that we are our overcomer. As much as you're struggling, as much as you maybe find yourself into situations and problem, you are still, listen, the Bible goes on and says, when the weakest of saints go down on their knees to pray, the devil tremble. And the enemy knows that you have something that he cannot 
get, he cannot. Uh, he doesn't cannot, have any access. To he doesn't have access to. And because of that, he's trying to manipulate. I preached him this some time ago. It's it's a mind game he's playing. He's just playing it, playing on your emotion, playing on your mind. But you, there's more to you than your flesh. Mm. There's more to you than Amen. your flesh. Amen. Amen. And, you know, as we bring this program to a close, I just feel, I just want to repeat this. We said it earlier. I just want somebody who is listening, who is watching to know that, you know, uh, this doctrine of once saved, always saved, it's not scriptural. But, yeah, your salvation is more secure than the devil would have you to believe, though. Yeah, that is what we want you to, to understand, to take away from this program and to know that if you are struggling with sin, yeah, you don't need to try and reinterpret the, the scriptures. You don't need to try to make what you're going through a non-sin. Yeah, if the Bible says it's a sin, it's a sin, right? And we must strive to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. But know this, that the God that you serve, who, who, who went through this elaborate all these elaborate things to set up this salvation plan for us. Because salvation is a rather elaborate plan, you know. Yeah? He's able to love you through the personal crisis of a struggle with sin. Just don't accept that the sin is right and just strive to live for him and to, and to do that which is right. Yeah? We encourage you today to remember that. God loves you with an everlasting love, yeah? And that uh, will not change, all right? We have to leave it there. Uh, uh, we weighed and measured the doctrine of eternal security. It does not line up with the scriptures. It's not in step with the apostles' doctrine at all, yeah? And we we will continue to try to discuss these topics and more uh, for you right here on the apostles' doctrine. Tomorrow, we want to talk about music in the church. Uh, another interesting topic. I tell you, you don't want to miss it. Uh, this has been the Apostles' Doctrine. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Clive Atkinson and Pastor uh, uh, Garfield King. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us in today's episode. This has been the Apostles' Doctrine. I'm Tyron Reed saying good afternoon. Everywhere he went. Calling all believers. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come for the fellowship. Stay for cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. Join Pastor Dean A. Brown for the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. The word of the Lord says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, brought to you by the Christ Alive Christian Center, 427. 17 to 19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. All in one dollar store.